Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to 3 Now my name is Jack and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install, set up and use the Cura Slicer software. So hopping right into the video, I know I made a video about Cura a few months ago, but it's a new and updated version of Cura. And also, I want to show you guys some more features and a whole in-depth process from installing having a finished G-code file. So the Cura slicing software is one of the most popular slicer softwares for 3D printers because first of all it's free, second it's super easy to use, and third because it's a great slicer. I've been using Cura for the past two years now and I've had zero problems so far. So Cura is actually made by one of the bigger 3D printer companies called Ultimaker. So to find the Cura software online, you can either search Cura software or Cura Ultimaker. So you'll see here it says Ultimaker Cura 3D Printing Software. You can just click that and the page should show up. So you can see here it says download for free. This is Cura version 3.1. You can see here all the different features it has. And we can go ahead and click download for free. And it wants you to pick what you're going to use it for. But you can just click I want to share any information and go ahead and download that straight away. So Cura works for Mac or Windows, and as you can see here, it downloads really fast. You can click the install file. All you do is simply drag Ultimaker Cura to the Applications folder, or on Windows, it should just show up with a box on how to install it. We can go into our launcher, and you can see here it says Ultimaker Cura. So we'll go ahead and click that, and it'll open for the first time. It might take a few seconds to verify on Mac. But if this shows up, you can just click open and on and on Windows might be a little bit different. There might be a few extra boxes or buttons to click, but just follow the directions and it should be pretty straightforward. All right, so here we go. Now it's opening Cura 3.1. It should show this startup screen and it should take a little bit longer to load for the first time, but after that it should load pretty quickly. So when you open up Cura, there's going to be a little disclaimer. And it, you can read it if you want and click I understand and agree. There you go. And this just shows you what has changed and all the different updates that they have done. So you can just click close. And here's the newest version of Cura. As you can see here, I already have my two printers loaded. But for the sake of it, I'm going to show you how to add a new printer. So it'll either ask you right away when you install Cura to make a new printer or you can go up here to the right and click add printer or you can go up to Cura preferences printers and add a new printer. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new printer and if you have an ultimate you can select it here or you can go to a custom printer which is what I use for my CR10. So I'm going to go ahead and name my new printer. I'm actually going to just name this Prusa i3 and click add printer all right so there we go we have our new printer for i3 and it's going to show up with this settings box so this is where you insert all your settings for your specific 3d printer so here we have the build size this is your build plate the x and y of your build plate so i'm going to go 180 millimeters by 180 millimeters that, that's the size of your bed and this Z is the size of how tall you can print on your printer. I'm gonna go with 190. And the build plate and the build plate shape. This is this is the shape of your build plate. So you can do either a circle or a rectangle or square. It depends on what your measurements are right here for X and Y. Under here, you can say the origin is at the center, which means it'll think the center of the XY coordinate grid is at the center of your build plate, or you can put it in the corner, which is what most people do. So if you have a heated bed, you can click the heated bed button. And this is your G code flavor, which you don't really have to touch. If you're just using a regular printer, it should be Marlin, but there are different G code flavors here for different printers. And I'll just leave this normal if your printer manufacturer doesn't tell you otherwise. So print head settings, you can just leave this the same for now. Gantry height, just leave that the same. Number of extruders, you can change this to however many you have. Nozzle size and material diameter, this is important. 
if your printer takes 2.85 or 3 millimeter filament you can use this one or you can change it to 1.75 millimeter filament the nozzle size is the size of your extruder nozzle which extrudes the filament out onto the build plate 0.4 is the most common so i'm going to leave mine as 0.4 when you're all done you can click finish and it'll save your printer here and there we go i have my prusa i3 printer you click close and there we go i'm now slicing on my prusa i3 printer if you have more than one printer you can switch between each printer super easily in cura so you can zoom in and out on this build plate you can right click and orbit or you can hold shift and and right click and drag you actually move up down left and right in the build area so this is a representation of your build plate this is exactly where you can print as you can see over here on the right we have all of our printer settings over here and if you want to add more settings or you don't see a setting that you want to change for more advanced users you can go up here to the top and click Ultimaker Cura, click preferences, and you can go into settings. And you can see here, these are all the settings that Cura can allow you to change. If you wanna add one of these to your side toolbar here, you can just click it and then it'll show up on the side. So here we have prepare, which is pretty much the main home screen. You can go to monitor, and this is for connecting your printer to your computer and seeing live stats about it but we're not going to talk about that in this video so i'm going to go back to the prepare tab so again on the left i'll show you what these do once we import a model and up here we can click solid view x-ray view or layer view which i'll talk about once more when we insert a model so to insert a 3d model to slice there are a few ways you can either click open file up over here on the left file open file over here or you can simply just drag it in so I'm just gonna simply drag this into the build plate, let go, it'll load, and it's gonna pop up right here in the middle of the build plate. All right, so there we go. Now our model is on our build plate. So we can rotate around this in 3D space and see exactly what our object is gonna look like. If we zoom in a little bit, the red here is the overhang. So if you have a lot of red or overhang, you might want to add support to your 3D model, which I'll show you in a second. So in default, Cura has the most used settings on the right toolbar automatically. So we can go ahead and start changing these. The layer height. This is the height of each individual layer that your printer will print. Point 0.1 is a really thin layer, which will allow for high quality prints but I usually print at 0.2 layer height and this is a good combination between speed and good quality. But the next option to change is shell. So these are the walls that your printer prints that make up the outer layer of your object. So the wall thickness you can see here is 0.8 millimeters. Our nozzle in, in my printer is 0.4. So two of those is 0.8. So that means that the shell is gonna be two layers around. The top and bottom thickness this means the thickness of those layers are going to be two times our nozzle height so that means two layers so top layers i'm just going to put two and bottom layers i'm going to put two as well so we're going to open up the infill tab here and this is the percentage of plastic that it uses to fill in your model as default it's going to fill it in with sort of a crisscross pattern you can change that in the settings if you want so I'm gonna change mine from 20% to let's go 15%. Scrolling down, we can see material. This is, this is probably one of the most important things you see here. Printing temperature, this is the temperature of your nozzle. So you're gonna to wanna to look at the temperature that your plastic tells you to print at. I'm gonna change mine to 195 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna leave my build plate actually at 60 degrees Celsius, which is about normal for PLA plastics diameter here is the diameter of the plastic I'm gonna change this to 1.75 flow rate is how much plastic the printer pushes out so I'll just leave this at hundred percent for now and I would definitely enable retraction this allows your printer to take out the plastic and push it back in to your hot end to allow for a more clean print 
moving down the speed. This is how fast or slow your printer is gonna print the object. So right now I have it set at 60 millimeters per second. That's a pretty fast speed. I'm gonna bump it down to 50 and that's pretty much normal. Now travel speed is how fast it'll travel between when it's not printing. 120 millimeters is fine. Moving down, enable print cooling. This allows your fan to constantly be cooling the print. That will definitely leave that on as you will get better results. So as, as I said before, if the object has red underneath of it, like right here, you might want to consider adding support. So I would add support on this model because there's a lot of overhang and I'll just click generate support. And you'll see here support placement. Everywhere means everywhere in the model that there's overhang, it'll put support. Or you can change that to touching build plate and this will only add support for places where the model is touching the build plate and from the build plate to the chin. Moving down, we have build plate adhesion. This is how the model will stick to the bed. So right here we have a brim, which is just a few layers around the model itself. We have skirt, which is what I will use. It's just a few layers that go around the model just to prime the nozzle and get it ready to print. Or you can click raft, which prints a small sheet of plastic below the object to make sure that it sticks to the bed. Once you're done, you can just peel that raft off the model once you finish printing. So special modes is nothing for now. You can just leave that. So these were the custom settings. These were more of the advanced settings that, that you can change to dial in your print perfectly. But if you don't want to use these custom settings and you're more of, of a beginner, you can go into the recommended tab. You can just adjust these basic settings here to get a decent print. So, so we can see here the layer height we can see the print speed and the infill percentage, support, and bow plate adhesion. These are just a few quick little options that if you're a beginner and you just want to start printing right away, you can use these in Cura. But I like to use custom settings because you get to control your printer more and you'll get a better print. Over here on the left, we can see our object and we can click on it. And right now we are in the move tool so we can move our object around the bed by just dragging or we, we can change the x y and z position right here if we right click anywhere in the build space we can center the model we can delete it or we can multiply it furthermore on the left we can click scale and this allows us to make our object bigger or smaller so we can grab one of these and make it smaller or larger so I'm, i think right about there's a good size that looks good and and also you want to click uniform scaling which which means all the x y and z are going to scale together so it so it stays the same shape as you make it bigger or smaller over here on the left we have rotate which allows us to move our model we can grab one of these rings and twist it there we go over here we have mirror we can we can mirror our model in a, in a direction or we can click per model settings. This allows you to change the settings for different models if you're printing more than one. Once you're done with all these settings, we can see over here in the right bottom corner, it's gonna take approximately an hour and 31 minutes to print. Use 5.63 meters of filament, which is 16 grams. And up here in the right, we can see we're looking at the solid view. All right, so we can go up here to X-ray view, and we can see through our model. Or one of the most useful tools in Cura, we can click layer view. This will show you exactly every single layer and move that the printer will make. So you can either click play, it'll go through exactly how the printer will print, or we can drag the slider bar and we can see layer by layer how the printer is going to print our object. So here we can just drag up, you can see the infill and the perimeter and the support being built up. And we can see it building our Yoda head. So once we're done with slicing, we can go back to solid view and we can click save to file and then save it to our SD card. So as you can see, Cure is pretty simple and it's a very powerful tool for slicing 3D models.
So I hope you guys liked this video and learned something. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more 3D printing videos. Comment down below if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys in the next video.